Be Wealthy and Smart, Episode 1000. a world of wealth and financial freedom without budgets, boredom, or bosses on Be Wealthy and Smart. And now, here's your host, Linda P. Jones. Welcome to Be Wealthy and Smart. I'm Linda P. Jones, America's Wealth Mentor, empowering women and men worldwide to financial freedom. I can't believe it. Today is podcast number 1,000. I'm so excited to share today with you. And I wanted to make this podcast really, really special for you. And I thought, what could be more special than to provide my best wealth building idea? And I'm also going to provide something very special, a free gift for you at the end of this podcast. So you'll want to stay tuned and listen to the entire podcast to find out how to get that. It's a $1,500 value that you're going to receive for free. So first, I want to reminisce just a little bit about starting this podcast. It was May of 2014 when I started Be Wealthy and Smart. I had been in the investment industry and had retired from my corporate life after my husband passed away, and I decided it really wasn't the life I wanted anymore. I felt my life was going to change, and from that point, I went in search of what my life's purpose was and found some coaches and mentors that I hired to help me figure out what that was. And it was in one of those groups that the title Be Wealthy and Smart was suggested. And the idea I had for the podcast was really to do a few things. One was to provide wealth mentoring for people, not in a braggadocious way that I know everything, but in a way that would really help guide people because there would be a perspective on every financial topic that they could go and look up and see what I recommended for any particular topic. I felt like the internet was so powerful and we have so much information at our fingertips, but sometimes we're bouncing around from expert to expert. One will say one thing, one will say another. And I really wanted a place where I could gather a lot of very valuable information, particularly about investing, which I felt was lacking somewhat in some of the financial experts that were out there. I mean, there was a lot of talk about debt. There was a lot of talk about FICO scores, but there was very little talk about how to actually invest your money and what the rules were to invest successfully and how to diversify your funds like professionals do. I really felt I could teach people about investing in a way that they could manage their own money and not have to pay fees to financial advisors. Another idea was to handle high-end topics for people who were high-income earners, who had discretionary income that they wanted to invest, and to look at what are the habits of millionaires and billionaires? What are some of those secrets of what they're doing? What are some of the things that people aren't talking about? And I wanted to report on what are some of the more aspirational things that you might want to eventually have in your life, whether that's exotic trips, who knows, maybe you'd want to go on a yacht charter, or maybe you'd want to take a trip around the world, or maybe you have a dream home to buy or a dream car to buy or putting your kids through school, or being a humanitarian. There's all kinds of dreams that people have with money. And I didn't feel like people were addressing some of those aspirational things that people want to do with money. So we talk about some of those higher end uses of money. I also wanted to have a show that was time efficient, recognizing that time is your most valuable asset, and you want some serious information. You want to know what to do and steps to take to actually better your life and your situation. But you don't want to take hours and hours and hours to do that. So I thought having short podcasts that got to the point that gave you the pertinent information, that took all the information that was out there, boiled it down to the most important points that maximized your time and maximized what you could get from it, would be a more valuable podcast. And that's what I try to do every single podcast. 
And finally, I wanted to speak in plain English. I wanted to eliminate the jargon and the lingo that the financial industry has put into investing. And that was one of the things that I noticed when I got into the investing world, when I started my career a long time ago. I noticed that it was a foreign language to speak about investing and to talk about the concepts, how they were made much more complicated than what they really were and that people didn't really understand what was going on because there were so many topics and techniques and words that people weren't familiar with. And they made it feel like it was too complex for you to do yourself. We know today you can invest your money very successfully. Using proper asset allocation models, you can diversify like the professionals. So since that time in May 2014 when Be Wealthy and Smart started, We now have seven and a half million downloads. We are ranked in the top 1% of all podcasts globally. We're listened to in over 182 different countries. And from the topics that I covered on the podcast, I wrote my first book in 2018. You're already a wealth heiress. Now think and act like one. Six practical steps to make it a reality now. And that book got named to the list of all-time best wealth books by Book Authority. And then in November, I brought out my second book, Three Steps to Quantum Wealth, The Wealth Heiress's Guide to Financial Freedom by Investing in Cryptocurrencies. We introduced the book. It went number one in three countries, US, Australia, and Canada. And we've brought out a new version with larger print, listening to you and your suggestions. And I'm working on the audiobook, which is a little bit delayed, but still in the works to come out. So stay tuned for the audiobook in the next few months. So let's talk about my favorite investment right now. And when I define what my favorite investment is, it's not necessarily because of the people involved or the thing that it does or the product that it is or what it sells for. I don't think about those things when I think about what is my favorite investment. When I think about what is my favorite investment, I think about what is the investment of all investments in the entire world today that has the best wealth building opportunity for you. That's what I think of when I task myself with what is my favorite investment or my best wealth building idea. You see, There's so many different asset classes. Of course, we have real estate that's been the most successful asset class for decades now. We have stocks that have done extremely well and even better in the last five years than they have on average the last 50 years. We have precious metals, which I believe are coming into their own this year. In particular, silver, I think, is really going to shine this year. There's also things like oil and gas and other commodities. There's, of course, Bitcoin and massive amounts of cryptocurrencies to invest in. So there were a lot of things I considered before answering this question and thinking about this podcast. But in the end, I came to the same conclusion that I had before I wrote my second book. And that is, my best wealth building idea of all ideas right now is to invest in the cryptocurrency known as XRP. Because I believe XRP is the best digital asset for payments. And Ripple Labs, the company that acquired OpenCoin that turned into XRP, is creating the Internet of Value. And the internet of value is going to make payments as easy as it is to send an email. You see, when the internet was created, it was really about information. And it was about sending emails. It was about creating websites. It was about building social media and being able to communicate. It was all about communication. But they left out the ease of value. And so we still had to use credit cards and bank accounts and wire transfers and ACH transfers and all these different things to move money. But now with cryptocurrency, it's going to be as easy as sending an email. And when you look at using digital assets for payments, you want to look at things like what is the speed per transaction? What is the cost per transaction? And what is the scalability or how many transactions per second can be done? Because if you're talking about something that can process thousands and thousands of transactions per second, 
then you're talking about something that's scalable. Because think about all the transactions that Visa and MasterCard and American Express take every single day, every single minute, every single second. When you have a global situation where people are using money for payments, you've got to have a scalable answer. And when we look at the cryptocurrencies that are available today, we see that one stands out above all the rest to handle those payments. And that is XRP. The speed per transaction of XRP is three seconds or less. The cost per transaction of XRP is a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of a penny, 0.0004. The scalability is 1,500 transactions per second. And I believe there are some improvements that actually are increasing that as well. You compare that to what people think is the leader in cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, which is at 66 minutes per transaction, a cost per transaction of over $28, and a scalability of only 32 transactions per second. Ethereum is better, but not much. Two minutes per transaction, 96 cents per transaction, and 16 transactions per second. Bitcoin and Ethereum are not fast enough or low cost enough to handle massive transactions, but XRP is. And that's why Ripple has already got 300 plus agreements with banks around the world, and every single country has already declared XRP as a digital currency and not a security, which is something the SEC is testing right now. And around the world, we see massive central bank digital currencies are being created with XRP and its sister currency, XLM or Stellar Lumens. Both XRP and XLM have the technology to be used for stable coins. And stable coins are a stable $1 asset value, dollar for dollar, backing that stable coin. And what that does is that allows you to not worry about a fluctuating value, but to have consistent value, just like when you send one US dollar across the world, it's still worth one US dollar. But when you're delivering the transaction in three seconds, it's reducing the amount of fluctuation that you have in foreign exchange pricing. So this will actually help to lessen the volatility in foreign exchange. And it means that banks don't have to keep $27 trillion tied up in holding multiple foreign exchange currencies waiting for someone to need that currency in physical form. So those Nostro Vostro accounts that banks have been holding where $27 trillion is sitting idle can be freed up because XRP works as a bridge currency from one transaction to another. You go from the US dollar into euros, and in between those two is the bridge, XRP, that makes the transaction very fast, very low cost, and it reduces the risk of volatility because you're only transacting in a three second span. So it makes it ideal for foreign exchange, It makes it ideal for stable coins to have a technology that can keep a stable value and create central bank digital currencies because every country worldwide now is creating a digital version of their currency so that they can trade internationally on the blockchain. That allows for a trustless system where having the correct address is verifying that it's going to the right place. It's also decentralized which means that we aren't going to have a central operation controlling all of this because Ripple Labs themselves control less than 7% of the nodes. So it is completely decentralized and nobody's in control of it unless the holders of XRP vote to change the system. Every time somebody sends XRP, a little bit of it is burnt up. So it makes it a deflationary asset, not an inflationary asset. That means it's going to hold its value and it's not going to be losing value like we're seeing cash do right now because of the oversupply of the US dollar that's been created with 40% of all US dollars having been created in the last 18 months. And the supply has been expanding so much, it's devaluing the currency. 
and we're seeing this high inflation, really at an over 15% rate when you compare apples to apples to how the government used to calculate it in the 70s. So XRP is a perfect solution for solving this problem and providing a digital asset that will maintain its value. And because of the speed per transaction, the cost per transaction being so low, and the scalability being so high in that it can do so many transactions per second, that makes XRP able to handle all of the money. It can handle all of the bonds being tokenized. It can handle real estate being tokenized and value being sent through the blockchain. It can handle stocks being tokenized and sent across the blockchain. It can handle cash. It can handle anything of value. And when you look at the value of all the money out there and the value of all the derivatives out there, we're talking into the quadrillions of dollars that can move across the XRP ledger rails and using XRP as the bridge currency. So why then is it only selling for 80 cents? The reason why XRP is still selling at 80 cents is number one, the Securities and Exchange Commission did throw a lawsuit at Ripple Labs and that's been ongoing over a year now and that has kept the value of XRP down. But I do think that's going to be resolved soon in Ripple's favor. After all, multiple federal agencies in the United States have already declared XRP is a currency, not a security. And for heaven's sakes, you can use XRP to buy Ripple stock through Link2. So if that's the case, then aren't we proving that XRP is the currency and Ripple Labs is the stock? The price is also down because the money that is being transported on the XRP ledger right now is being used on a private ledger. The private ledger has been disclosed by Ripple Labs in the press, it is a fact, And this is where central banks have been running their funds across that private ledger. That gives them more confidentiality and it allows the massive funds to flow at a much higher level of valuation, which I think it's doing. So while they needed to introduce XRP and gain some liquidity, they also have been testing it on private rails. And eventually those private rails will merge with the retail side of XRP, I believe. And that's another reason why I think XRP is the asset that has the most potential to increase in price of any asset I have seen or am aware of at this particular time. Because when XRP gets to handle all of the money and run massive value on its rails, that's when you're going to see a massive price movement up that's going to be, I think, north of $1,000 within the next year and beyond that in future years. So people ask me, Linda, what's a better thing to invest in, Ripple stock or XRP? Well, I have to say I'm invested in both. You have to be an accredited investor in order to invest in Ripple Lab stock because it's not a publicly traded company yet. So to be an accredited investor, you need a million dollars of net worth outside of your primary residence, or you need to have a Series 7 license, or you need to make $300,000 in income. And you can have your CPA write a letter and vouch for you to link to. I think Ripple Lab stock will do extremely well. And of course, it's going to benefit from XRP's value increasing because there is a large escrow of XRP that Ripple Labs owns. It's up to them whether they burn that amount or give it away to a charity, a nonprofit, or what they choose to do with that. But that amount of XRP will be very valuable to Ripple Labs. And so I think they'll do extremely well as a publicly traded company. So Ripple Labs is going to be one of the most valuable companies out there, in my opinion. However, when you look at a percentage gain, I think XRP will make the bigger percentage gain because it's only at 80 cents right now. Just getting to $1,000 is a huge percentage gain. So I believe that actually XRP is the superior investment percentage wise. So don't worry if you're not an accredited investor. Don't worry if you can't qualify to buy Ripple Lab stock pre-IPO. 
And that's why if you ask me, Linda, where is your very best investment idea today? I would say it's XRP. But do your own research. That's just my opinion through my research. I own both. I can't make you any promises. Now, I've gone much longer than I usually do in my typical podcast, but I wanted to make this a really special one for you. And if you've listened all the way to the end, I have a great reward for you. And that is my free training called Financial Freedom by Investing in Cryptocurrencies. Now, this is something I was giving away to people who bought my book. I gave it away as a book bonus, so you may have already heard it if you've purchased my book and you opted in to get my book bonuses. But you don't have to purchase my book to get this, and you don't have to opt in or give me your email address to get it. I'm giving it away completely for free, no strings attached. It's a 60-minute training about financial freedom by investing in cryptocurrencies that's going to go even deeper into XRP and why I believe this to be such a great investment. And it's a $1,500 value. How do you get it? Go to my website, lindapjones.com forward slash webinar, W-E-B-I-N-A-R. That's H-T-T-P-S colon slash slash L-I-N-D-A-P-J-O-N-E-S dot com forward slash W-E-B-I-N-A-R. It's a 60 minute training that's going to share even more with you about XRP and why it's such a great investment. And if you want to know more about cryptocurrencies, how to shave decades off of your investing time, and why I believe cryptocurrencies are an amazing investment opportunity the best of our lifetimes, check out my book, Three Steps to Quantum Wealth, The Wealth Heiress's Guide to Financial Freedom by Investing in Cryptocurrencies. Thank you so much for listening, subscribing, and for leaving reviews of the podcast and the book. I so appreciate all your efforts and time that you've spent with me, and I look forward to the next thousand podcasts together. That's all for today. Until next time, live the good life and be wealthy and smart. Thank you for listening to Be Wealthy and Smart with Linda P. Jones. Share the wealth and tell your family and friends about the show. Check out our website, blog, and social media for more riches at www.bewealthyandsmart.com.